Hello everyone, I hope all is well. If you're a megalithic fan, Takhte Rustam might sound familiar. However, I hope my comparison today will keep you wondering if this site is what they claim to be. The landlock of Afghanistan was at one time flourishing in Buddhist culture. The pre-Islamic era holds many wonders and mysteries of megalithic culture. On a hilly top, approximately 1,000 meters above sea level, south of Abak town, there is a top-down rock-cut monolith structure that was once a Buddhist center. Tak means throne and Rustam was a Persian mythological king who created this site in half a day. This site, Takhte Rustam, was named after him when Islam took over the country and attached a legend to it, thus giving it a new name. We actually don't know what it was called when the Buddhists were circumambulating this massive stupa in ancient times. This colossal monolithic stupa is 8 meters deep with a diameter of 28 meters. The reason for this mega project has been so lost in history, we don't even know when it was made. Harmika is a structure related to burial, so that means it was meant to bury the dead or has to do with the dead. In the case of this enormous monument, it once held the relics of Buddha inside the Harmika. From this aerial view, I can see that the stupa sits inside on top of the hill. So that means the bedrock needed to remove is more than just carving straight down right away. They must first chisel the top part. It is an enormous task to chisel the top prior to carving top down. After that, Ancient Buddhists actually dress it down to smooth surfaces, leaving no chisel mark. It is believed that Buddhist monks carve into the bedrock to avoid being noticed by invaders. However, this contradicts the design because the harmika sticks out like a sore thumb. This monument has two marks that caught my attention. The mysterious gear tracks and rectangular holes just like those around the world are also present here. There is also a rectangular hole that archaeologists call it water tank for rituals. However, water tank in Penang in Taiwan, Petra in Jordan, and Sumba Island in Indonesia have no religion attached to their story. There is an unusual and unnatural groove that looks like it was melted with something hot. Also, there is one part of the trench that looks like some melt and scoop technology. Scoop marks are typically present in lots of megalithic sites around the world. If it is there, you can find it. They are hidden in plain sight. The little hill across the stupa is another caves and tunnels system that mainstream says it was probably to escape the heat of the day. The massive caves and tunnels system is beyond the need to cool down on a hot day. The hot days are only during summer. It is snowing during winter. Monks will be frozen here. The massive chambers and halls carved out is over the top based on what is actually needed for monks. If carving bedrock is easy, people in Samangan will be living in bedrock today and every home will have a power drill ready for extension renovation. Nearby Takhte Rustam, there is a two layer of megalithic structure for unknown reason. This 12.5 by 12.5 meter square has those mysterious clamps just like those around the world. What are the odds that the same clamps were used around the world only in megalithic sites? These giant slabs are already very stable without the clamps. Maybe it was made in anticipation of a cataclysmic event. What are the odds that ancient religious people around the world are obsessed with top-down rock-cut bedrock monolith. We have Kailasa Temple and Damra Jeshwar Temple in India, 11 rock-cut cave churches in Ethiopia, and Gunung Kawi in Indonesia. Takhi Rustam is small by comparison to these gigantic monuments. There are several more top-down rock-cut bedrock structures that I will share in the future. They have more questions than answers. So let's do a quick recap. We have a rock-cut monolith done with ancient chisels, near a massive caves and tunnels system, not meant for living. 
We have melting and scooping technology, rectangular holes, mysterious clamps, water tanks, and a legend that says it was done in half a day. Well, that's all for today. Hope you enjoy my presentation on Takhte Rustam and see you next time. Khoda Khafes!